Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with another episode. And today we're gonna really focus on keeping on budget. We're keeping, we're continuing the budget game because I know in the past I haven't been too honest with tech that's actually cheap, that's affordable. All the things in today's episode will technically be the cheapest in their category or very close to. I know that this year has been super wonky and the importance on saving a bit of money is super important. So let's get started with the first item. It's right off to the side here. It is the Poco or Poco phone. This is the X3, so their third variant, and this comes in at $235. And that is crazy savings for a smartphone, especially when you compare that to the Pixel 4, which I've been hyping up, which is $350 interesting sticker almost looks like a tap that I could add onto my arm and here is the actual device and you can see some of the specs of the device it's actually the first phone to feature the new Snapdragon 732G the 4A had the 730 chipset it's got a 120 hertz display screen when you compare that to say the 4A even the iPhone SE which is double the price of this a 64 megapixel camera and a massive 5160 milliamp hour battery so a ton of value and it feels pretty premium it's got a nice little heft to it and unlike previous gens of this phone those were just rebranded Redmi devices this has its own fresh new design so you can see Poco on the back. It's kind of got a two-tone finish. It has the blue up the middle with, of course, the surrounding on the outsides. We've got the quad camera system on the back. And if we power this device on, and just like that, we've got the X3 set up. And like I mentioned, it has that 120 hertz display. And we've normally only seen that on, say, the OnePlus Nord, which actually only has a 90 hertz display. So obviously Poco, which is actually a sub-brand of Xiaomi, is throwing a ton of tech. And I challenge you guys to find a device for 235 bucks that has the specs to compete with this guy. And using this device initially, it's not as smooth as stock Android. That's the selling feature for the 4A, but I would still say this is a definite contender. Poco X3, check it out. And the next item on the list is the Avanki 7-in-1 USB-C hub. And big shout outs to Avanki for sponsoring today's episode. I usually use my main device, which is my 16-inch MacBook Pro. And for that, I use this main adapter. And usually dongles or adapters cost $50 to $60, which is kind of ridiculous seeing as you just need some extra ports. But this Avanki one actually has some of the most versatility. It has seven different ports that you can use. So you can see on the back, it's got the classics, it has HDMI, it's got two USB 3 ports, it's got another USB-C port, which is the power delivery, it does have an Ethernet port if you want to hardwire your connection. The thing that I use the most is just the standard SD card slot and the mini SD card slot. I take all of my content, say, straight from this camera, I can plug it into this, and then I can dump all of that footage into, say, Final Cut Pro, which I use to edit all of my videos. I actually prefer that it has a bit of a longer tail. You could even use it, say, on your iMac, your iMac Pro. It can stick into the back because I know a lot of those ports are inaccessible, so I'm curious which port you kind of miss on a USB-C device. I think most people would say HDMI, but most content creators, that SD card slot, that's just so money, and I still wish my current MacBook Pro had that. The next budget item on the list, we're switching on to a pair of headphones. And I know that I've introduced things like the OnePlus Buds, which is some great value for $80, but unfortunately those don't have any active noise canceling. These are the Amazfit Buds and they really rival AirPod Pros. They come in at right under that $100 price point. And when you compare that to AirPod Pros, which are around 250 bucks, these are some of the best noise canceling earbuds that you can grab. They fit great. They've got an IP rating. I've actually used them a ton in the gym. And I'm not just blowing some hot steam. A lot of people on Amazon, I think there's over 2000 reviews on them, have claimed that they're good. The sound quality is honestly some of the best that I've heard for this price range. Would definitely recommend these for people that don't wanna drop 200, $220 for buds, but still want some decent sound quality. And we are now switching to tablets, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S6 Lite. And I know that Samsung just came out with their new S7 lineup, but that runs around $750, $800. And because we don't have the S7 Lite yet, this has actually come down in price and is right under that $300 mark. So it comes in with a 10.4 inch display, which I think is the sweet spot for a tablet. It only has four gigs of RAM, but remember the price that you're paying. It does most of your day-to-day -day stuff. So if you're 
using it to browse a ton of web content. It's great for, say, watching Netflix, playing your occasional tablet-based game. Nothing too crazy or graphic intensive. This hits that sweet spot. Maybe my only criticism, not just to Samsung, place some front-facing speakers on it because when you're sometimes holding it in, say, landscape, you could potentially block them. But once again, that's that criticism to most tablets. And until Samsung releases their S7 Lite, this will still be produced. You'll still grab it in the Samsung store. Overall, solid tablet for cheap, and I think that's what this episode is all about. Next item. Onto some gaming or I guess computer peripherals. You've flaked me enough for just having only Logitech stuff on the channel. This mechanical keyboard, super on the budget end. It's 40 bucks, so it's called the Red Dragon. I found the cheapest option over on Amazon. It has some of the best ratings, and for $40 for a fully mechanical keyboard, For that price range, you just can't beat. And this model actually is owned by one of my buddies who bought this, I think, two years ago. So it has blue switches. I think you can change them when you do order them. So cons, because you have blue switches, it is a bit of a loud keyboard. So if you're trying to get into the Twitch game, you're using your keyboard a lot, you can definitely hear that. But on the flip side, I think a lot of people do like blue switches. And like I said, for $40, it's RGB backlit. It's wired, so you have the fastest response time. Now people cannot just say, I only use Logitech stuff. The Red Dragon. And the last pieces of tech on today's episode, all of these are the cheapest options off of Amazon. Same buddy. He's actually starting his very own YouTube golf channel. I think I've actually featured on it. This is the rig that he's built out. So this tripod option comes in at 60 bucks. It's from Toyoka. It has a fluid head mount. And I actually have tripods from both Benro and Manfrotto, which are more brand known, are worse than this. And I actually paid close to double. It has fully articulating legs. It can get nice and compact. It has this center column, which is great for changing the height of your shot and some nice quick releases. And that fluid head mount, this is great for leveling out shots. And I've actually probably spent more than $60 just on a similar fluid head. And I think my next option, if I do need a tripod, would probably go onto something like this, especially for mobile setups. If you're using a smartphone, you don't need a three, $400 tripod. The next option here is a phone clamp. And I I think you have an iPhone 8. So that will slot in here perfectly. And maybe the coolest part, because I actually have the Rode Video Micro, which is around $150. This mic was 30 bucks. $30, so way better budget. Once again, we went to the cheapest end of the Amazon scale, and the sound quality that you get is pretty similar, to be honest. It has a dead cat to help out with any of the wind. You can see the main microphone, obviously not as good as, say, some of the microphones I'm using here in studio, but for something that plugs right into your smartphone, it's better quality than anything that's coming straight out of a phone or even, say, a small camera. So solid choice, this was the last item on budget. And yeah, now you guys can't say that I don't do any more budget episodes. So let me know which one your favorite one was. I honestly really tried to keep things on the cheapest end scale for whatever category that we looked at. I'm still honestly blown away by the Pocophone X3, $235. I don't even know if you can get replacement hardware parts that cheap for a phone. So awesome to see for $235. And the last thing, who has seen the Xbox Series S? $299 for next-gen gaming, so that's 1440p. That price point is honestly some of the best that I've ever seen. People spend more than $299 on a given graphics card, so I think that's really awesome, and I wouldn't be surprised if they sold way more Series S's. It's just getting your foot into the door for that next-gen type of gaming, which everyone's kind of doing right now. Everyone's sitting at home, everyone's playing way more video games, especially come this winter. We're all gonna be in quarantine again. It just makes total sense and I'm curious what you guys have to say. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's budget episode. I know that we went through a ton of stuff, so let me know your fave and I'll catch the rest of you in hopefully one of my next episodes or vlogs. Peace!